Thank you, Tony, for this interview. That's right. Uh, can you start by presenting yourself, please? Yeah, I'm Tony Grizzoni. I'm a screenwriter um, and a filmmaker. And uh, I've directed some short films, but mostly I, I write screenplays. That's what I do. Okay. And how did you start uh, working as a, in this industry? Yeah. Um, well, the first thing to say is I started uh, a long time ago. So um, I think I was always interested in film and TV and comics and playing, really. But if I'm speaking to people who are in, say, uh, a film school now, I have to be a little bit careful because I think there are a lot of things they find very difficult about getting, it's beginning a career, about making movies, about being part of that world. And whereas because of my generation, where I come from, uh, I never really thought too hard about it. I was very lucky, um, but I kind of grew up um, not wanting or needing a proper job, in inverted commas, you know. And, and we never did anything to do with screenwriting. It was like screenwriting didn't really exist in a way. Mm. We, you know, used to write down what you were going to shoot, but, um, or have a book of uh, collages, I remember, cutting out images and trying to draw images for what we were going to shoot. But there was no real idea that, uh, notion of what a screenplay was. But I didn't think, oh, I'm going to become a screenwriter. I went to, I did, went to the college, I came out, I worked, as, um, I worked in the editing rooms as a third assistant editor, which means carrying film cans. I, um, uh, I worked as a runner, I worked as a third assistant director, a second assistant director, eventually a first, not a very good first assistant director. I worked as a production manager. Um, I worked in commercials, I worked in music videos. I um, uh, would do anything connected with film. And then I got a job uh, at the BBC uh, television uh, through uh, a great producer who died not long ago called Tony Garnett. And Tony Garnett used to work with Ken Loach. Uh, and Tony Garnett gave me my first proper job, in fact, uh, working on the film set. Um, and then I got together with a friend of mine and we decided we'd make some short films. And so we, uh, he was going to direct and I was going to produce and we were going to co-write these these short films and eventually we did we got we we uh, were you know we were um, uh, commissioned and we made short films and they went out we made three in the end and they went out at the cinema as a like a B movie before their feature so we made those short films. we thought oh here we go we're going to be real filmmakers now and then nothing happened uh, and I worked on documentaries and some and then eventually um, s some certain circumstances, my big circumstances, my life changed and I left London um, and um, I started, um, I wanted to stay, I didn't want to go away on a film set anymore. So, um, but I was still passionate about film. So I decided to write um, uh, outlines and treatments, maybe, of films that I really wanted to, uh, uh, that I wanted to see. But I had no, I didn't have any plan about how to make them, I just wrote them down, and sometimes they were like a collage of, uh, of images. And that was the beginning of writing. Okay. And how did you learn writing? Um, I, the, the first things I wrote were very, um, uh, which, if I read them now, I would be very embarrassed, of course, but they were very, um, they were full of prose. I, would, I, I, was, I was writing as if I was writing a short story. So I would describe internal things. I would just, you couldn't see when you were shooting someone. I would describe, um, uh, I would describe the carpet and 
the light. I remember being excited uh, to write uh, about the little bits of dust in the air. It was way too much. It was just so extensive. And then over the years, I read other real scripts that, you know, and I, and I noticed how they were more economic. Um, and then I got excited about writing in a very economic way. And then I, I would just pick up on simple little, uh, uh, the rules, I guess. Um, so each, to keep a sentence as short as possible, um, to uh, try and have a sentence equals a shot. And then later on, I got excited by choosing or using a particular vocabulary that fitted the, the, the particular film that I was writing. So, that, and I will do that now, I will change the vocabulary to fit the, the tone or the style of the film. But overall, I think what happened is I, I've tried to make things more economic and uh, speak more, but with less, I guess. A, you know, at one time I would have written, um, oh, if, if someone was tired, I, I would describe how he put his hand in his head, or, you know, his head in his hand. Uh, and I would never, I would never do that now because I'm very aware of an actor. So, and I'm aware of an actor, and I'm also aware of a director, and I'm also aware that, you know, that other people are involved. It's not just me writing, imagining it. So, I, I would try and avoid uh, limiting them with my version of an action, when what's important is an emotional uh, response from that character. Mm -hmm. What is the starting point when you want to start writing a story? Sometimes I think, um, it's, it's, I, I, I thought you would ask the question, and um, I don't have an answer really for you. I can try. Uh, because it, it, it begins in so many different ways, you know, you, you can... You can be watching someone um, behaving in a particular way. You can watch someone uh, be embarrassed in public and be captured by what they're, how they're behaving. And that can be the beginning of something. You know, you wonder about them and why they're embarrassed. And we wonder about why, why are you connecting to them and why do you feel their embarrassment? And that can grow into something. Or, you know, it's like just now we were sort of walking on a beach almost and uh, there, there were, there were, you know, there's a particular long grass there, and it's blowing in the wind, and it looks very beautiful to see this grass moving in the wind, and so you can you can stand there and look at it, and you know a scene will emerge from looking at that grass there, or you will remember something that you that happened to you, or you will remember a film. Sometimes you know, it's uh, it starts so, but it it's usually with an image or a um, it's usually an image uh, or, or an action, I think. That, that's where it begins. It wouldn't, it, it would not, with me, it would not start with um, something I wanted to say. I would, be, I would be suspicious of doing that. I would be nervous of it and I wouldn't trust that. I'll find out. <laughs> Uh, as we go forward. And then you try to understand the meaning of uh, I, I'm not sure what image. happens. It, it, I think it makes connections with other images and other sequences and other actions. And it starts to grow like that. I think, you know, if that person I mentioned who seemed to be very embarrassed about something in public, maybe they're um, like a young mother who is embarrassed by her child. You know, because children can be embarrassing and don't fit. And if she wants to, uh, maybe she wants to um, still be perceived as being a very young, unattached person, and yet she has this monster child who's throwing food around or, you know, doing this, 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 you know, she would love that child, but at the same time she's embarrassed by that child. So already you see I'm making this scenario grow a little bit. So you, it, things like that, but then she becomes real. And then she starts to have a life, and then we find out what's going on with her. 
So it would, it would grow like that. And then at some point, you write down uh, the scenes that you want to see or the scenes that have to be. You don't write down the mistake, as I think, sometimes to <coughs> start telling the story bit by bit. But I find it more interesting to just, oh, I really want this, this scene would be great. And I really want, and I'll write this scene. So you end up with a series of scenes like this that you, you want to see, you want to experience in some way. And by the time you're doing that, then there's a, a narrative is unfolding um, very quickly after that. And you're saying you want to experience as a screenwriter or for this, for this spectator? You are? Uh, you're, you're both, of course, you know, you, you, it's, you, um, it, it's one, you know, sometimes people will say, oh, so what audience do you have in mind for this? <clears throat> and I don't, I, I can't really imagine an audience. <laughs> I don't know what I, I have to imagine, you know, it's a, because people are just so disparate, they're so varied. And what, what do you think about the, the goal of stories of fictions in our society? Are you aware of that when you are writing, that there is, you have a role to play in society? Or? Um, I'm not. I'm aware, I'm aware that I have a role in society, or that I, I'm aware of being part of society. I'm aware that um, I don't want to be writing stuff or making films which are detached from society. I don't want to, I'm, I'm very, um, I'm concerned to know what is happening. And I'm cons and I will have an opinion, um, and I will have, uh, depending on, on what it is, I may play a part socially. Um, you know, I will have I will have particular political opinions. I will have political uh, certain allegiances. I will have all of these things. These things exist. They're part of my life, um, and I'm aware of them. I'm aware of that filtering into what I write. But I'm also, I don't want to write a piece of propaganda, I guess. Um, but does that mean that you need to fight against your own opinion or? It means that I don't want to preach uh, and that I want to find a kind of reality, if that makes any sense, I, I, that I want to um, I will, I will, I'm very attached to character, so I will really, I'll do anything I can to try and become those particular characters at different points, and I don't want to lie about them, so I'm aware that a lot of is going on in an unconscious way, but um, I am not, I won't have a character um, be a mouthpiece for what I feel, but I, what I know intellectually, I would never, I would never do that. You can play; it's it's a playing thing, and sometimes the playing can be quite um, uh, confrontational, for no other reason that you maybe you are sick of how polite society is and you want to behave badly. You know, it's like. Um, I remember waking up uh, after the Brexit vote had gone in favour of Brexit, and it was something I was personally afraid of happening, and something that I am passionately against. You know? And yet it happened, and there was, and I was aware of a double reaction. I was aware of um, being really miserable and disappointed in this happening, and then. On the reverse, I was aware of a kind of excitement, which was a kind of will to destruction, I guess. And so, you know, those the, these two things, uh, uh, the, it really interests me about about how they that that interplay. So I can I I will and have written things which are uh, about chaos and about destruction uh, and. Why would I do it? I'm not. It's not a lesson. It's 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 
for the chance of trying to get in the skin of something which is so foreign to me, but which I will find exciting. It's like uh, giving your point of view about something? No, or, it's no. about uh, bec trying to become something which doesn't have my point of view. It's about trying to be, uh, trying to put on the skin of an alien, something totally different. Okay. And w what do you think about all the books written about making stories? Do you think they are mm. um, limiting screenwriters? I think if you're interested in the business of screenwriting, I call it business, uh, in screenwriting, mm. then th there are many, many books. I see no harm in looking at them. I, you know, but there are many. And um, uh, I don't think you will find a book uh, which will tell you how. I think you're more likely, that if there is a book, there is one book I came across, which is by a ma man called Keith Johnston, called Impro, which meaning improvisation. And originally it was a book for actors. I found that book more helpful with screenwriting than any book that says it's about screenwriting. And it's, it's um, he, he was a really fantastic uh, dramaturg, really, and he worked with actors and he did a lot of improvisation work. So he understands about things like self-censorship and they're all connected with acting, but they apply to writing as well. And so it becomes really interesting to, uh, to um, find ways of, of, of avoiding your censor, your inner censor. So, you know, that's why a lot of people, me included, write early in the morning because the closer to sleep, the better, because, it, it, you know, your, your conscious hasn't kicked in properly quite yet, so you, you'll still have certain freedom. But what would be the, the basic that make a story for you? What, what is the...? For me, I, uh, I, I, I'm, sort of the, uh, I'm obsessed with a very few things. I really, I really get excited, I like a, a kid, about the idea of going to another world. I just, it's like the biggest thing for me. And it's, it's, it's about, it's about um, going to another world, whether it's, you know, it can be a fantastical thing, or it can be a pa past world, or it can be a different quarter of the city you don't know, or a different, you know, it can be anything, but it, it's about being, arriving somewhere where you don't know the rules. And it makes me very, very excited. And so I, I, you know, if you're asking what makes a good story, then for me, that's key. That idea of being like an alien in a place, not knowing, not understanding what's going, what, how things work or what's going to happen. And then also uh, um, getting into, um, into an, some altered state, whether it's through a drug or whether it's through um, uh, sex or whether it's through just an elated feeling for something. I mean, those kinds of transcendental moments, I mean, I, I get to, but, but that's very close to just going to another world, you know, that's just about an altered state. So it's about, about being in a place which, in a new existence somehow. And when you write about, uh, n not a fantastic world, but mm. uh, a world that you don't know, mm. how, how do you do? It's research, you find another mm. screenwriter that knows this world, mm. or...? No, I, I would, I would um, try and go to it, or imagine myself in it. There was a short film I made which was uh, called Kingsland, which is set near where I live in London, but it's a Kurdish diaspora. I'm not Kurdish, I don't speak Kurdish, I don't speak Turkish. Uh, but a lot of these Kurdish people came from Turkey as a result of um, escaping the, the, the very dirty war by that time. And these people are on my doorstep, you know, I saw them all the time. And there were certain shops, certain cafes and so on, restaurants that they ran, that knew. But I, I, I liked being around the place because it didn't feel like... Um, white Anglo-Saxon 
uh, London, you know, I mean, and, and so I was excited, but I didn't know anything about them. But w what happened is that I, um, I started to meet one or two uh, young Kurdish people and they introduced me to more and more people and events and so on. And so I learned about something about that Kurdish diaspora. And then I became very excited about, uh, I started to write down certain stories that they told me and things that had happened to them. And then I, I um, started to piece this together as a film. So it was, it was a, an entry into a, into a very different world. Even it was like three streets away from where I live. I didn't know it, but I had entry to it because I was lucky enough to find a couple of guides who were willing to take me into this place. That was discovering and entering a, another world very much. And, and the whole film um, was very much about that because it was about a young man coming to London as a different world, at the same time about us entering as a crew this little, this little um, community, you know. And so this work uh, helps you uh, avoid making cliché of this I, world or...? I, I think, well, cliché is, you know, the key is to write, if you want to write well, you have to write badly and you will write cliché, and I, read, I do it every day. I mean, it's appalling, <laughs> unbelievable cliché. Uh, so y y the trick is to, to recognise it and to, and to be cleverer and more sensitive and be prepared to go in there and make it better. At least if you write badly, you can rewrite. <clears throat> and are you used to write with other screenwriters? And do you have any advice to write together? I, I, I don't do very much of that. I, okay. I have tried, I mean, I've worked, I think the only director I've worked with right, is Terry Gilliam. And that's another experience altogether. But the, the um, I, not, not anyone else. Although recently, uh, I've been working with a friend of mine where we, um, he is a writer and he's a producer. And we are, um, we are writing together, we are shaping the story together, and we, um, uh, I, I will write a first draft, or he will write a first draft of an episode, and then pass it over to the other person. Um, and it's working, touch wood, it's working really well so far, because we try not to be judgmental, we try and ask questions rather than provide answers. It can mean that you don't get stuck so easily because it's not just you. When it works well, it can work really well, I think. But the biggest thing is if, we're, if you and I were working, we are working together now, but the biggest thing is to listen and, and you know, so what are, what is, what's being said and to make space for someone else and not to be too fast with um, uh, rejecting something. You know, to give it time and to enjoy the fact that you are working together. I mean, these are very general things, but I think it, if, you're, if, you're, if you're friends, or, you know, if you've written with a friend, you will, th these sort of things will be happening naturally. You know, so it's a very, and it's a very close relationship. Um, I, think, I think if you can, if you can make one another laugh, it's a good start. Do you have any advice for writing alone? For writing alone, yeah. Um, have a have a routine. Decide: Are you an early morning writer or a late night writer? Um, mark out your time. I'm going to write from eight a.m. till twelve, or whatever it's going to be. But say that's what I'm going to do. Then do it. Um, what, what do you mean by writing? When you say from this time to this time, I you, write. Do you actually yeah. write or...? It's a good question. You've, you are turning your attention to the thing you're making. 
that's what you're doing. Mm. And it depends what stage you're at. It's tricky if it's very early because you could say, yeah, I'm going to attend to this. I'm now going to an art gallery and going to look at some pictures. This is, that's tricky because you are now surrounded by a lot of other influences. I would say it was probably better to go to the art gallery in the afternoon and continue the work in that way. There's something, I think the, this period of time that we are calling writing is about focusing, it's about turning your attention to. Sitting or standing doesn't matter. Laptop doesn't particularly matter, it depends how you get it down, but you are focusing somehow for a period of time. But I think you have to, you have to remain for that period of time in that place without, any, without other things. Um, gaining your attention. Um, so is that, then um, walking is everything. There is a connection between writing and walking, which I don't fully understand, but there are lots and lots of, of, um, of books out there going way back about the, 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 where these two things meet. Um, I, I would say you should, have a, you should have a notebook or some way of taking down notes as you're walking, because otherwise everything vanishes. So those two things, um, writing on your own. Um, I'm trying, I, I am trying all the time to find different ways of doing things. I've tried putting cards up for the scenes. Um, at the moment, thanks to Le Group West, I'm now deeply into the tarot. And so I'm, I'm, I'm experimenting with that in any way I can to try and surprise myself, I guess. And how do you keep learning uh, new ways to think about stories or to write? By meeting people like you, who are new people is one way, uh, by um, being involved in, in pla certainly places like Le Groupe West, that's one reason why I'm here, to try and find a way of reinventing myself a bit. Um, but communication with other people who are trying to do the same things, and by hearing other people's stories about trying to work in movies and TV, you try and, you do this, if you do this enough, then you don't make the mistake of sitting back and thinking you know everything. And, and you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how old you literally are, but you don't want to be, you know, an old person who seems to know everything. That's not very interesting. Would you have an advice for yourself when you were young that would save you time? It's not possible, you know that. <laughs> you know that I can't save you time. You have to, you have to, do, you have to find your own way through. I, I, I think... Although I'm, I'm happy to talk to you now, when I was young, I was very shy. And so I was very shy and very nervous. Um, uh, to say anything. Uh, so I could never, I could never, I couldn't, I found it very difficult to speak. I was very, just embarrassed, you know. Um, but I couldn't say something to make myself less shy. Um, I think I'd, I'd try and encourage me to take a little more time and to think about things before acting so rashly or such a quick, in a quick way, making terrible mistakes in all kinds of ways. But <laughs> that, that's me talking to myself as a young man. That's yeah. not being a young man, you know. But as a screenwriter, like advice for, let's say, young, young screenwriters, do you think young people should write stories or they should wait to have more experience of life. No, no, write <laughs> stories. <laughs> Just write. You shouldn't. You don't need. You 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 gain experience as you go along, but write. Just do it. Do it. I mean, the the main key is just to 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 write. It's not just writing. We're talking about screenplays. They have to be made. So you know, go make the things. You the the big mistake I think is. You know, there's a big queue of people waiting outside with a hat, like waiting for money going to ask the same, the same few people with money. Um, and why, why do that? Why put yourself in that position? Somehow you have to find a way of just doing it and get, 
and making something. In a way, it doesn't matter how you do it or what level you're doing, as long as you are making something, I think. Um, and, not to, and I think I would, so I would certainly say that to my young self, but also not to imagine that the mainstream had all the answers, because it doesn't, of course. You know? okay. Well, thank you, Tony. Oh, I hope you got something out of yeah. all that stuff. <laughs>